Juneteenth is now a federal and state holiday for the first time. A major step, but not nearly far enough according to New Jersey leaders. When it came time for the passage of the 13th Amendment, you needed a 27 state majority. New Jersey was not in the 27 state majority. Slavery was the law of the land. It was the law of the nation. It was the law of this state. It was even the law of this city. And the city, the state, and the nation owe reparations to the people of African descent. The People's Organization for Progress and the New Jersey Institute for Social Justice teaming up for this rally called Say the Word Reparations. They say although they're happy Juneteenth is officially being recognized, it's not enough to atone for the hundreds of years of abuse felt in the black community. We live in the shadow of slavery, and we know that to be true because today in New Jersey, although we're one of the most racially diverse states, we're also one of the most uh, racially segregated states. Although we're one of the wealthiest states, that wealth exists alongside some real punishing poverty, and those are connected to slavery. So you can't really commemorate Juneteenth if you don't unpack the underlying challenges that uh, Juneteenth uh, illustrates. People are going to try to make an assumption that because we have a federal holiday called Juneteenth, that African American people, the descendants of slaves, should be happy and just sit down and go away. So activists and local leaders are now demanding lawmakers pass a bill that's been introduced to create what they're calling the New Jersey Reparations Task Force. The team would be in charge of figuring out what else can be done to fix the lingering effects of slavery. Reparations is about restoring, about repairing, and about healing. We can't get back those lives that were stolen, but we can do right by successive generations, and we could do right by the legacies that were left. Governor Murphy recently announced the creation of the Wealth Disparity Task Force aimed at closing the racial wealth gap in the state. Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver will serve as one of the chairs, but some activists say leaving out the word reparations means not properly addressing the effects of slavery. The governor responding at today's presser. And that's going to be a game changer. I mean, this is looking at all reasons, particularly uh, in black and brown communities, why the gap in net worth is as staggeringly wide as it is. So it's all-encompassing. This is a far-reaching endeavor. The wrong of our history can never be made fully right. However, the challenge for us as a nation and a state today is to acknowledge that the legacy and effects of slavery continue to live on in the structures and systems of our present society, benefiting one segment of our society while continuing to debilitate another. And so we pray, lament, protest, and cry out for justice. And justice is what these activists say they're hoping to have once the reparations bill they want is passed. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Melissa Rose Cooper.